Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Bringing you a Christmas Day Grand Solar Minimum update, Wednesday, December 25th, 2019. And the big story is the sixth record snowstorm to move its way across our country in 2019 and the last blizzard of the year, but the first blizzard of the new winter. We'll get to that. Keep calm. It's boom time. Happy holidays. Forecasters keeping a close eye on a brewing post-Christmas storm, and that's the big story. The tranquil weather on Christmas Day is not going to last long as a developing storm system will unleash the first significant snowfall of the new winter season for areas from the southern Rockies to the central U.S. The same storm bringing rain and mountain snow to southern California and the southwest through Friday will move into the center of the country by the weekend. Snow will spread from Arizona late Thursday night into western Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado by early this weekend. There's the map. Snow spreads Friday, slippery roads, reduced visibility, travel delays, dark blue region 6 to 12. The heaviest snow is anticipated across southern Colorado and northeastern New Mexico, where over half a foot is possible, said AccuWeather meteorologist Brent Anderson. Cold snap brings more stunned turtles to North Carolina Aquarium. Did they say cold snap? Yeah, they did. <laughs> Guys, last week there was a cold snap on the East Coast, and just that little tippy touch of cold, yeah, brought more than 96 turtles that have been transported to the Aquarium Sea Turtle Assistance and Rehabilitation Star Center. And they got numbered with little chalk numbers there. Thunderstorm moves through the Bay Area overnight, delivering hail and snow. Holy hail. That looks like hail and snow. In the Bay Area, California and the upper Midwest to see snow and rain, while much of the country enjoys a toasty Christmas. That right there is a fabulous dress. Excellent. Mother Nature will bring some warm Christmas cheer to much of the country. I'm sure you know, especially if you're in the southeast. San Diego Mountains, however, could get up to 30 inches of snow, drawing cautionary note from forecasters. We predicted this up to a week ago, that Southern California would get snow and ho, 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 forecasters say that 20 to 30 inches of snow will fall in the upper San Diego County Mountains late Thursday creating a potentially dangerous winter wonderland. About one to two inches of rain will fall everywhere else. Flooding, avalanche, snow, sliding, accidents. Ho! People will need more than chains for their cars if they're going to go see the snow. They're going to need a wing and a prayer, said Brant Maxwell, a weather forecast service provider or whatever. They should be packing food and extra food and clothing, flashlights and other warm, cuddly things. There could be traffic jams. If you really, really have to go to look at the snow, well then, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> San Diego Mountains could get buried. And that's boom. That is tonight's first boom. And a yay. How was your Christmas? Was it a yay? Bam. Southern California Ski Resorts. How much more snow is on the way? Plenty. The holidays have been... Good to Southern California ski resorts this year. Thanksgiving brought a weekend of good snowfall, and Christmas is set to do the same. New storms in the local mountains are predicted to bring more than two feet of snow through Thursday evening, just in time for the post-holiday rush on the slopes. We're no dopes. We're strapping on our skis and headed west. Minnesota could be impacted by winter storms this weekend. Depending on where you live, it could bring rain, mix, freezing rain, huge car pileups, and snow. Dense fog Wednesday morning will greet early Christmas Day travelers, and the holiday could end up with people in western and central parts of northern Minnesota getting some light snow and perhaps some freezing drizzle. What a pizzle. Here's the snow forecast through Friday. And there's not a lot showing up there in the upper Midwest, trust me. But the heavy snow down here in southern Nevada, check out the Sierras and south, and the big winter from Alaska down into B.C., should be ending the drought in many of those drought-stricken regions. Let's check out the snowfall analyzer for the last 24 hours. And you can see where the biggest winners are. A little bit in Seattle, a little bit in the southern uh, Sierras here. Let me get this. Let me move this up. That way we can see the totals here. If you want to see the totals that I'm pointing at, all you have to do is look right up here in this area. So when I hover over a snow amount in southern Colorado, you can see 18 inches. 
over here in Utah, you can see 12, 24. See how that works? Idaho, 8, 4, 6, 8. So that's the last 24 hours. And let's look at our entire Christmas today. We'll just give it a minute here. It's going to take a minute for it to parse up. There it is. There's your 48-hour totals. Biggest winner, Southern Utah. You can see the spots moving through here. Some regions getting 30 inches in these dark reds. 36 over there. Hello. 18 inches in that spot right there. Steamboat Springs and other regions. And we're looking for more snow. And this snow pattern will move east. Let's check the models. And we'll just pause this through Friday. Heaviest snow in the next 24 to 48 hours. Southern Colorado into Baja. And then BC, big winner. Light snow through the Four Corners region will pick up Saturday as we get a big dump in southwest Colorado, as well as southern Arizona. Texas, the nexus of the Schmex is picking up a little tippy touch as that blizzard begins to develop. Right here on Saturday morning, it's going to move through Nebraska, up through South Dakota, and right through your, yes, that's true, Minnesota, say it ain't soda. And then take a look at the totals moving east to Maine. It's insane. And the pattern stays snowy through the same region through your first week and a half of January with no snow reported in the southeast. But the southern Appalachians are going to be picking up snow all the way to Georgia, which is good news for those resorts. Take a look. It is going to be a ski season to remember. Now let's check out space weather. Estimated planetary K index has been at zero for almost 24 hours through Christmas Eve and Christmas. And when I woke up this morning, I said, oh my goodness, there's got to be some crazy people out there. So I put in Christmas shooting and I got three pages of Christmas shootings. Seven-year-old girl critically wounded in Christmas shooting, one dead, three injured in Christmas shooting, gunman identified in Christmas Eve shooting, killed three and four kids rescued, Christmas Day shooting, nightclub, one dead, two injured, Christmas Eve shooting in Tenderloin, asthma Christmas shooting leaves man dead, Christmas Eve shooting leaves teen dead, woman hurt, crash car, 30-year-old man critical after West Garland Park shooting Christmas Eve, man shot three times on subway Christmas morning, Florida deputies kill man who shot sister in Christmas Eve dispute, Battersea shooting man dies after being shot at his doorstep Christmas Eve, women injured by drive-by shooter while walking down the street Christmas Eve, six-year-old boy in critical condition Christmas Eve after shooting a Vallejo, man killed in Christmas Day shooting at Edmonton, Man wounded in Worcester Christmas Eve shooting. Man killed in Christmas Eve shooting in Kansas. 61-year-old man shot while visiting family Christmas Eve in Litchfield. Are you picking it up? It goes on and on and on. Thousands of people shot. Thousands of people losing their mind. And it's only going to get worse. 3.6 magnitude quake Christmas Day Latest to strike West Vancouver Island. Well, they mustn't have had a seismic update and they mustn't have seen the 4.8 and Port Hardy that kicked off right after that report. We've now had four six magnitudes up in the Cascadia zone, two six magnitudes in Central America and South America region, with a total of six six magnitudes on the west coast of the Ring of Fire, the west coast of the Americas or the east coast of the ring. I know, it's very confusing. But we're going to keep a close eye on Cascadia. But the good news is that this aftershock is indicative of a, the end of the output. So I was a little worried when each quake got bigger and bigger. But this sign of the 4.6 is good news because it's at the surface. And it may mark the end of the seismicity. But not the end of dangerous seismicity worldwide. And what I mean by that is we're about to align with Jupiter, the largest gas giant in our solar system, which tends to kick off the big ones. And that's coming in just a few days. So the next few days may be interesting. Hold on to your seats, folks. We're in a deficit for seven and eight magnitudes. So it's anyone's guess where that will occur. Most likely the Indonesia region. World's tallest geyser breaks eruption records, stunning Yellowstone visitors and scientists. Only it's not. USA Today is a rag. And then if you just read the first few sentences, you'll understand what I mean. Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone National Park blew past its yearly eruption record in 2019. Blew past. That's a boom. That's like a yay to boom. That's a boom past. Why is this out here? Let's get rid of that. I touched something. I'm sorry. Let's get back to where we were. 
The world's tallest active geyser erupted 47 times, according to the USGS, indicating the erratic geyser has entered its unusually active period. Let me put my ugly mug here for all you folks who don't know what I look like. Yes, I'm quite cute. Yes. Over the years, Steamboat has gone decades without erupting, including a quiet period between 1911. And I don't want you to know this information. <laughs> oh my gosh. It just switched because it heard us talking about it. So let's go back there. Steamboat, which can send water 300 feet in the air, set its previous record just last year with 32 eruptions, and now we have 47. And many people have their panties in the bunch because this means that Yellowstone is going to erupt. But let me just clear up the wind here. Uh, Yellowstone is a, the largest geothermal hotspot in the world, and these geysers pick up and lose activity on a decadal scale. So it's completely normal activity to see a dormant geyser like the steamboat geyser picking up an activity like it is. The only geyser that's been stable for over 100 years is called Old Faithful. Hmm, I wonder why they named it that. Now, USGS scientists say the recent eruptions mimic activity spikes at steamboat in the 1980s, meaning it's the same. And based on what I just told you about a decadal scale change in activity at Yellowstone being normal, this does not signal future volcanic activity at Yellowstone. So if you're still watching the Fearmonger channels, stop it. But the story never dies, and they'll be able to continue to get clicks off of BS. Worldwide Volcano News Update. You know what's not BS? The facts. The fact that Popo is erupting in Strombolian, glorious style to 25,000 feet. Let's enjoy it together, shall we? Maybe I'll play some flute. How? Oh! oh, it's not even set up, or but we can wing it. <laughs> My little Christmas ditty. We could do jingle bells. That's later. So Popo getting quite active and putting on a Christmas Eve and Christmas Day show for the people downwind. Guys, I want you to come over here to one of the most, the newest channels, Volcano Time Lapse. Subscribe to the channel. Give him a thumbs up. Tell him Diamond sent you and tell him we want this guy on the show. And let's see who they are. Doing some really great work. On Christmas Day, they're putting out these time lapses and they're uploading important videos that we need to see. So, go check them out. Links will be below. Now, let's get to more, some more facts of scumbags and let me shrink myself down so you can actually see the screen. <laughs> there we go. Mike Bloomberg exploited prison labor to make 2020 presidential campaign phone calls. Read the article. This is what these elite scumbags do. Bloomberg has more money than everyone in the world except a handful. And this reptilian shapeshifter scumbag is now going to blow your mind in what happens for the next presidential candidate in 2020 for the Dems. So stay tuned for what happens there. Three children die and flu in Oregon. And the red states are the bad states. So we're going to leave you links to this below. And if you're worried, here is the high activity we're talking North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, the entire southern tier, except for Florida, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, New Mexico, Nebraska, Washington State, all winners on high flu activity, including Puerto Rico, 
Heads up, influenza-like illness, ILI, activity level indicator determined by data reported by influenza-like illness, net, 2019-2020. The near, this update is as of December 14th. And Colorado's in, uh, doctors in Colorado are baffled by a different flu strain popping up early in Colorado. They have no idea what's going on. Could have something to do with the fact that I just closed off that link that we need to look at. So let's get that back up here and reopen the very important tab. I'm sure you need to do a dab, so white screen time. But nitro and flights remain a mystery in Colorado, up in the northeast quadrant of our state over the last week. Well, the purpose of recent nighttime drone flights over the northeast Colorado that have been reported on remain a mystery as of 12 hours ago. Authorities who are trying to learn the identities of the operators of six foot in diameter drones, still nobody knows what's going on. The drones have flown over Phillips and Yuma counties over the last week in Denver. The Denver Post reported, sorry, that's not in Denver. That's in the northeast quadrant of the state. Phillips County Sheriff's Office cannot explain where the drones are coming from or who is flying them. The FAA and the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Air Force, the U.S. Armed Forces Command said they don't have any information about the aircraft. And that's because you don't have to report uh, craft that fly at lower than 400 foot ceiling. These drones, the group of at least 17 drones, listen to this, estimated wingspans of 6 feet and fly between 7 and 10 p.m. only. The drones remain two to 300 feet off the ground, which they do not have to register with the FAA, and fly steadily in square patterns of about 25 miles. Now, it's my supposition that this is Monsanto or some other big ag company that is using this data for some of their apps that they're trying to sell for, to farmers. But it could be alien shapeshifters and the government implementing, uh, well, anything. It could be the beginning of the end, folks. Or it could just be something we haven't been told about. Or it could be AI has created these drones and they're now preparing to launch their assault on humanity. They've been doing a grid search and a grid pattern, Elliot say. They fly one square and then they fly another square. The FAA spokesperson said drone pilots are not required to file flight plans unless they are in controlled airspaces, such as near airports, which these drones aren't. The estimated size and number of drones makes it unlikely they are being flown by hobbyists. This is a very expensive, very expensive program, whatever's going on there. Overhead, they're probably doing 30, 40 miles per hour, he said. They weren't racing or flying around with speed. They're doing something very important. At the same time, a single drone hovered 25 miles away over the town of Paoli, remaining there throughout the night while eight more drones flew over Hawkston, about 10 miles from Paoli. These drones don't so far seem to be malicious, but the fact that we have dozens of drones flying over private property is baffling and, and creepy. And, you know, what else can I say? But, yay. And happy holidays. Sign of the times. Six-foot drones by the dozens to be cataloging your private property anytime soon. Where, where were we with these creepy drones? Doctors are baffled. Now helicopters drop water on Chilean city after fire destroys 120 homes. The whole world is burning up, but not really. This is normal wildfire activity. And thankfully, some rain has fallen on uh, Eastern Australia, quelching some of those massive burns. Dozens left homeless in Chile after blaze sweeps through low-income neighbors in Valparaiso. Well, it makes sense that they wouldn't go fight those fires in low-income neighborhoods, wouldn't it? Now, 10 years to save the planet, according to the fear mongers. Here are six imaginative climate change solutions. All BS. This is one big load of... <clears throat> Man, I can't even believe... How about sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? There's the idea. Well, if you suck too much out, the whole planet goes dead because we're the lowest carbon dioxide in geologic history and just 100, 200 parts per million puts us at risk of collapsing the biome. So that's the dumbest idea ever. Definitely not a scientist behind that one or an actual scientist, I'm sorry. 
I should have said that. How about creating clouds with sulfur? Well, because we're going into a period of extremely reduced solar activity called the grand solar minimum, and the magnetosphere is shutting down, and we're going into a magnetic excursion or reversal, creating clouds would add, only add insult to injury and increase the cooling that we're about to experience. Another bad idea. And each of these we scroll through is just a stupid idea. How about this one? Let's dump iron shavings into the ocean. Rusty ocean water. Gorgeous. And the blood tides. I love those. How about a giant sunshade orbiting Earth? Nah, that wouldn't cause any fossil fuels to make that. It wouldn't cause like trillions and billions of... Anyway, that would be completely carbon neutral. A giant sunshade shot into space. That doesn't create any carbon dioxide. How about if we refreeze the polar ice caps? Yeah, we'll use freezers and chlorofluorocarbons and all the other refrigerants we need. Oh, God. I'll do one more. How about we wrap glaciers in thermal blankets? Yeah, they need a little blankie. Let's pollute the earth more while we tax you for plant food. The ice we've lost on climate change this past decade visualized. Now, climate change is normal. Cyclic, and variable. And the only thing that this article doesn't show is the ice that's building. It only shows the ice that's melting, which would be called cherry picking in any other realm. Researchers claim to have evidence of 500 million year old fossilized arthropod brain. This is supposed to be impossible, but they in fact found the giant shrimp and its brain, apparently. Read the article. Lewis Stone Circle has a star-shaped lightning strike Probably cosmic lightning. Evidence of a massive lightning strike has been found at the center of a stone circle in the Western Isles. A single large strike or many smaller ones on the same spot left a star-shaped magnetic anomaly at the 4,000-year-old site in Lewis. Hmm. I wonder if that lightning's coming from space. The revision of ancient history. We're going to be doing this at LeCon 2020. And leading the task is my partner, Leah Shaper, who's going to be doing a presentation on linear is a lie. And the linear timeline we've been fed is completely fabricated, and she'll tell you why. There are many others that are tackling this concept, and she's been working on it uh, for decades since uh, she was an undergraduate in her mind. Uh, but she's going to be putting it on to paper and be presenting it at the Gaia Sphere. And we're going to be talking a little bit about it right now when the Smithsonian discovered ancient Egyptian colony in the Grand Canyon. Many of you know about this, and we're going to supply you with an article below. Um, basically, uh, there have been Egyptian artifacts found all over North and South America, dating back uh, two, three, and 4,000 years ago through many of the dynasties, and the Smithsonian has had a hand in covering this up. I'm going to leave you some blog entries from Egyptian Grand Canyon Connection where you can read yourself about Kincaid's cave and G.E. Kincaid, who first entered the cave when he was working for S.A. Jordan. The cave was named Powell's Cave because John Wesley Powell discovered the cave. And John Wesley Powell wrote in his report to the government, which he also published a book. In this canyon, great numbers of man-made caves are hollowed out. I first walked down a gorge to the left of a cliff and climbed to a bench. There was a trail to the cliff bench that was deeply worn in the rock. Now Kincaid served in the Marine Corps after retiring. <clears throat> now the tunnel we're talking about is presently on cliff wall, 395 feet above the present flow of the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. And archeologists estimate the man-made cavern is 3000 years old. 500 foot long, has several cross tunnels, was the lowest level 
and the last Egyptian tunnel city they built in the Grand Canyon, which means there are earlier ones. Smithsonian archaeologists have studied the Egyptian hieroglyphs on the walls of this man-made cave, and they are identical to the hieroglyphs for some kings in Egypt. The additional Egyptian writings has more addition. Uh, anyway, it's been covered up, and that's the point, and we're going to get to the bottom of it, as many have tried, and do our best. Now, Scott Walter, he's the host of America Unearthed, and we've reached out to him to try to get him on the show. But he's uncovered some interesting artifacts and even had a little bit of coin to date one. And this particular artifact, as part of the Egyptian grouping, looks more alien than Egyptian to me. But it's definitely a mosaic. has pictures of aliens and spacecraft on it. It looks like a complete hoax. But it has been uh, dated to 8,620 years ago before present, maybe a little longer than that. So don't quote me on it. I know it's between eight and 9,000, but it's completely enigmatic. And I'm sure you've never been told about that artifact. Now, ancient gusts of cosmic radiation could have affected Earth's biology coming out from the mainstream. They're picking it up. Prehistoric supernova explosions may have played a role in the development of Earth's biosphere. That sounds a lot like they're leaning towards evolution there, but not really saying it. I wonder where they're getting at. Ancient DNA reveals late survival of mammoth and horse in the interior Alaska. <clears throat> Many people go along with the supposition that the megafauna were all killed off during the Younger Dryas event. This, unfortunately, could not be further from the truth. There is evidence that some isolated Populations of mammoth lived till as early as 4,500 years ago on some islands uh, off of Siberia. Now, this paper reveals that horses lived as recent as 7,000 years ago in North America. There's also evidence that within the last 7,000 years, there was horses in South America. And so Rex and I and, and the team have been trying to uncover what these ancient Chaco and roads were used for and and if they only had horses in the last few hundred years, what were they building roads for? And so you st start to stumble across petroglyphs. This one in particular shows one, two, three, four people riding what appear to be horses. And these glyphs are dated four to 700 years old, which puts them right in the time when horses came to America, supposedly. But there are other glyphs in North America like at Newspaper Rock, they'd have plasma discharge glyphs and also more people on horses. There's the person on a horse, 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 shooting an elk. So is the timeline we've been fed correct? Or is this North American horse petroglyph actually two to 7,000 years old? That's the date. That could put this horse anytime in North America. And if the Native Americans are using these horses, if the horses died, they're probably using the pelts, the bones, almost all the parts. We should find them in burials. It's very confusing. We're working it out, but we're just talking about the petroglyphs tonight. So if you want to do your own research, I found this awesome blog. Look at those horses. They look like people. They're scary. But place to see horses of North America will lay out all the facts that I just regurgitated to you. I'll also leave you links to some of the extinct species, including Hippidion, considered a descendant of the Philohippines that migrated to South America 2.5 million years ago, and Equus scotti, which is more like a modern horse. And we even have skeleton assemblages in the U.S., Rock Creek, Texas, from about eight or 10,000 years ago. And that's the evidence that these horses were probably extinct. But you do your own homework. Did you have a good Christmas? Lee and I did. Thanks to all of our fans that sent us well wishes and gifts. 
Thanks to all of our one-time donors, our Patreons. Without you, we, we wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do it. This is a lot of work. But together, we can make a difference if you share these videos. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Certain states are going to be inundated with snow, including Minnesota. But they're used to it. Nebraska, too. But it is coming for you. Winter just started. Maine's buried. It's insane. Heavy snow throughout Idaho. Many regions above four to six feet over the next two weeks. Merry Christmas, y'all. We love you. Be safe. That's boom. Or yay. <laughs>